Today's movie has been billed as Jaws with Claws, and it's easy to see why. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling William Girdler's classic Jaws ripoff, Grizzly. Released in 1976, Grizzly was designed to cash in on the success of Spielberg's beloved film. Grizzly replaces the shark with a giant bear, moves from the beaches to the wilderness, but that's about all that makes it different from Spielberg's classic. Grizzly would have been consigned to the annals of cheap knockoff movies if not for one thing. It has a really good cast. Genre stalwart Christopher George reteams with Chisholm co-stars Andrew Prine and Richard Jekyll. They're not as good as Scheid or Sean Dreyfus, but they're definitely better than you'd expect to find in this kind of movie. But enough about that. Can Grizzly kill enough people to fill five barf bags with body parts? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is brought to you by patrons Gene, Robert Fish, and Stephen Keen. If you'd like to sponsor some videos and help free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link in the pinned comment and description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on the most exciting helicopter flyby ever. Maverick! Then this dude's gonna narrate the whole movie through his terrible Turtle Beach headset. Oh god, look out! Don't fly into Christopher George. I don't even know how many Christopher George movies we've done at this point. He was in Mortuary, The Gates of Hell, and Pieces. I will say, this is some super happy music for a movie about people being mauled by a killer grizzly bear, though. Oh god, pull up! We're gonna hit the trees! Pull up! Clearly, they spared no expense on these titles. And I'm not seeing Linda Day George anywhere in these credits. Here's a live look at Linda reacting to Christopher not getting her a part in this movie. Bastard! Bastard! Huh, I never knew Kermit the Frog actually had a last name. Man, I'm really glad we booked this flight. There's nothing quite like seeing the opening credits in their natural habitat. If you look closely, you can see the Torrance family driving up to the Overlook Hotel at the start of The Shining down there. Stop the credits! We're running out of fuel! William Girdler clearly paid for the full day with the Whirlybird, and by god he's gonna use every bit of the footage. I hope maybe we'll eventually fly into the actual movie. Edited by Bub Assman. Guess Ralph Titman was busy on another shoot. I'll say one thing about Bub, he's pretty anal about good editing. And Jeffrey Dahmer picks up a chick at Pioneer Days. Well, I guess we're done flying, we'll have to drive the rest of the way in. These guys are like, oh sorry, you're too late, you just missed the movie. Never thought you'd make it. Well, traffic was a real bear. Then it's time for some exposition. Okay, now everybody goes out and patrol. There's no way we can keep an eye on all those backpackers. Oh, we're just gonna do the best we can. Oh, hey, I didn't know Norman Mailer was in this movie. Apparently late in his career, he stopped writing novels and started writing menus. Turns out he's running this business into the ground. His daughter has concerns. Dad. Mm, what are those? Unpaid bills, I believe. Oh, I must have put them in the wrong drawer. I'll take care of them right away. Luckily, Christopher George is here to save the day. Why don't you write a how-to book? How to avoid responsibility. <laughs> what a dick. You know what the problem is? The problem is you're spoiled. Man, he's a real hit with the ladies. Meanwhile, in Little House on the Prairie, Nice job shooting them as they walk behind the trees, guys. I don't want to alarm anyone, but I'm firmly convinced Grizzly is in no rush to get anywhere. First the endless helicopter opening, now we're gonna watch them walk to camp in real time. If you think the bear is coming for them, no screenwriter's credit for you. It's just this ranger. I don't know why, but this feels like the start of a P-Hub video. What can we do for you? Stay out of trouble. What kind of trouble? He does have some sage advice, though. We well, just don't take any unnecessary risks. Yeah, you know, like swim less than 30 minutes after eating. Then it's time for Grizzly Vision! I smell a picnic basket, boo-boo! I know the age-old question is, does a bear shit in the woods? And I don't know the answer, but clearly this chick does. Okay, but I have to go first. Whenever it comes to cleaning up, you always have to go. Honestly, this could be the bear, or it could be Christopher George stumbling back to set after a night of drinking. Back at camp, this lady's like, wow, she's not back yet? She must have really needed to drop a load. Man, this suspense is unbearable. Then our title character shows up and gives her a taste of his pimp hand. He's just smacking her around with his bare hands. Literally. Her friend flees and finds the Unabomber shack. But she's basically Goldilocks at this point as the bear attacks. Yeah, this mauling is just right. This bear is doling out pimp hands like it's the first of the month. Then we jump back to Christopher George, who's asking the important questions. What story does this face tell you? Tells me you're an actor who's basically slumming his way through a bunch of low-budget horror movies before he dies young. 
What, you asked? After this atrocious flirting ends, they head up in search of the missing girls. But before they can start the search, Christopher George has to hit the can. What, it's occupied, but I gotta go. He heads in anyway, and this corpse decides to drop in. Say what you will, but this is a pretty grisly scene. The search for the bear continues into the night, and apparently they spent all the money on the helicopter opening and couldn't afford lights for this scene. While they're jibber-jabbering away, Allison finds remains. <coughs> Back at the coroner's office, we get some fantastic interior design. Terrible wallpaper and wood paneling. You can tell this was 1976. Then the coroner makes his ruling. This was no boating accident. It was a bear. And a big one. It was a big one, all right. Then Christopher George makes a thesis statement this movie is going to prove completely wrong. Bears don't eat people. Touché. Then this guy shows up. Why the hell wasn't I notified? Um, probably because no one knew you were in the movie. Well, since I'm here, I might as well check your TPS reports. Yeah. Before Christopher George can head out on a smoke break, Bill Lumberg stops him. I just looked at the TPS reports, and why are we spending so much on bear repellent? And we get some more exposition. Those bears are supposed to be in the high country. That's where we put them. <laughs> Maybe they should have closed the beaches. With news of the killer bear on the loose, all these backpackers are dashing out of the woods like there's a sale on trail mix down at Whole Foods. And I guess if you're looking for a killer bear, the best place to start is in your office. Your tax dollars hard at work, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, Christopher George calls his agent to get out of this movie. Well, you listen to me, you little... In another part of the woods, these guys are on the case. Keep your eyes peeled for a blonde bear and a red half shirt. Answers to poo. Kill on sight. These Civil War reenactors look even more bored than I am at this point. And since these two don't see Smokey anywhere, they decide this is a great time to stop for some sightseeing. Too bad Jason Bearhees is lurking nearby. <laughs> Whoa, she's stripping for the bear. This movie just got weird. This is not what they meant when they wanted her to get bear ass naked. I mean, I know there's a whole subculture of guys into bears, but I don't think this is what they were talking about. He's like, you're so hot, I can barely contain myself. I love this giant fake bear arm. How did she not see the bear hiding back there? Well, damn, I guess Christopher George is gonna have to hire a new forest ranger. I love that there's a killer bear on the loose and yet Christopher George never leaves the comfort of the ranger lodge in his office. He's very proactive. I mean, this is like Chief Brody hunting for Jaws in Amity's hardware store. Boy, there's something I'm not doing. Um, you mean like going out and hunting for the bear? I don't know, I have a hunch that might be the problem. No, I don't think I'm cut out for this. I'm with you, Christopher. Turn in your badge bear spray and go hunt the chainsaw killer in pieces. And if you were thinking, man, I like this movie a lot more when it was all shot from a helicopter, well, you're in luck. Guess they couldn't afford a barrow plane. Then the pilot offers this helpful advice. And you know, bears got patterns. Yeah, some of them love plaid and tartan, and the really sophisticated ones are into herringbone. They spot something, but if you guessed it's just Deer Man working on his origin story, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. But he's also here to deliver a title mention, so it's all good. What the hell have you done if you'd caught that big brown? It isn't a big brown. It's a grizzly. And just in case you forgot Grizzly was ripping off Jaws, here's this. This one here is at least 15 feet. Oh wait, there's more. According to the depth of his paw prints, he weighs over 2,000 pounds. This is the Grizzly equivalent of the bite radius. I hope they got a bear on the docks later. Down at this random camp, Budget Michael Shannon is about to get lucky. Inside the tent, this lady makes the tragic mistake of spraying herself in bear pheromones instead of perfume. <laughs> I think we've all been there. Oh yeah! This bear really is kind of like Jason. Michael Shannon is like, I was gonna score. Christopher George then shows us why he flunked out of the Compassion Academy. You can, uh, or you can ride me hand dogs. Oh, thanks. I can ride with my wife's small corpse? Really? I mean, it's hard to tell what Christopher George is worse at in this movie. Catching killer bears or consoling the bereaved. And then we get the Hooper Brody Mayer scene from Jaws. We got a killer grizzly on our hands. Scott, you're a maniac. Someone close the beaches. Fortunately, hunting season starts the next morning. <laughs> I'm sure one of these yokels will catch the 18-foot grizzly. Or maybe the bear's hunting them. Great, now the grizzly's got access to a rifle, you idiot. Look out, you're being chased by a stock footage bear. The grizzly might be lost. He should probably stop and get his bearings. The dude does eventually get away. I guess this is one time where being up Shit's Creek without a paddle is actually all right. Back in the office, there's still no grizzly, but we do get this plot twist. You're Maverick. Maverick! 
So, so far we've spent most of this movie looking for the bear in offices, a lodge, and now outside this parking garage. I'm starting to think these guys might not know much about bears. Over in the woods, these fatties are sleeping in buffet formation. Technically, for a bear, I guess this counts as pigs in a blanket. Or sushi rolls. Ah, oh, wait, he's not hungry, he just likes to watch them sleep. So peaceful, these sweet little humans. Hold up, it's just Paddington. This is pretty embarrassing. This bear's friendly, and you know, because this guy has it in a bear hug. Our yokels get the bright idea to use Paddington here as bait. And <laughs> sure, what could go wrong? Well, if you guessed it was going to eat Paddington, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. You sick bastards. Christopher George is not pleased. Whose stupid idea was to use that cub as live bait? Then we get this dialogue. I mean, he's going to come back to the scene of his crime. Wait, is this a bear or a killer in a Sherlock Holmes story? This might be the first night for night shot in Sick Flick's history. Oh, hey, remember that scene in Jaws where Hooper wants to use drugs on the shark? Well, it's in this movie, too. I've been developing these brand new tranquilizer shells. I'm not trying to kill him with it, mister. Just want to put him to sleep. And here's Quint's Indianapolis monologue for good measure. So there you had a little situation. A whole herd of man-eating grizzlies. <laughs> they start singing me show the way to go home, I'm calling the cops. The next morning, we basically wake up in a Folgers coffee commercial. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Do you kids even remember the old Folgers coffee commercials? Christ, I'm old. And at Helm's Deep, this sentry spots the approaching orc army. But the bear's watching him. It's all pretty meta. Do you think he's walking through here barefoot? Then he makes his move. I like that they're just shaking the camera here. After that, he takes this whole tower down like he's Conan the Barbarian. You could say Tom here got buried under this rubble. Christopher George is like, damn it, now I gotta hire two rangers. Back at base camp, Frank Zappa is conducting interviews. Then we head back inside, and I'd like to just take a second to admire the office decor. That's a Bob Ross original on the wall there. Then they exchange manly words, but this is the least manly push ever. I've been shoved harder by a stiff breeze. <laughs> Way to sell it, Christopher George. The outcome of this Iron Jaw moment is George gets fired. Movie over, right? <laughs> Not so fast. Scotty here really was basically the inspiration for Grizzly Man. Too bad they couldn't get Herzog to narrate his scenes. And over in another movie, this kid's stroking his rabbit. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. He's petting this bunny. Wait, that still sounds dirty. Holy wow, is the bear gonna eat a kid? My respect for Grizzly will go way up if they let the bear eat a kid. Turns out he's probably just here to provide some bearental guidance to this kid. Or not. Um, holy shit, the bear ripped that kid's leg right off. And no, there's no way YouTube's let me show you that. I guess it makes sense, though, since Jaws ate Alex Kintner. And he ate Mom, too. Well played, Grizzly. Well played. Wait a minute, I think the bear has returned to the scene of the crime in his human disguise. Then Christopher George shows us why he flunked out of med school, too. There's only one person you can tell it how it was. And that's little Bobby. He's alive? Part of him is... His bedside manner sucks. If you're wondering where Scotty got off to, he's out here hunting the grizzly solo. Well, we're almost to the end of the movie. I guess we can splice in more of this helicopter footage. No one will notice, right? On the ground, their master plan is to bait the bear into coming out. Be a deer and hang out here for a while. It's really hard to tell who's more of a bear in this movie, Christopher George or the grizzly. The bear brown tails it out of there, but Christopher George is in hot pursuit. Let's catch him and teach him to drink Schlitz while riding a unicycle. And of course they lose him, but he finds Scotty and the horse. No, not Mr. Ed. I mean, I guess he's Mr. Head, less after that pimp hand. And Scotty gets a pimp hand too. That's a whole lot of pimp hands in this movie. It is nice that the bear is going to provide a funeral and burial services though. But if you thought Scotty was actually dead, guess again. He's like, it's going to take a lot of work to get out of here. I'm really going to have to bear down if I'm going to make it. Too bad old Grizzly Adams here isn't done with him. Fun fact, the bear in the movie never roared. They added that in post. And to get him to open his mouth, they offered him marshmallows. The bear had apparently been kept in a pen with an electric fence. There was no electric fence on set, so they fooled him with a piece of green string. Seems pretty ballsy to me. Then Christopher George shows up. Oh man, he didn't even finish his Scotty. Bear's got eyes bigger than his stomach. Then they share a moment. You know, Dawn, of all the whirly birds in the Park Service Division, I'm glad I ended up in yours. And if you told me half a grizzly was made up of helicopter POV shots, I believe you at this point. Then this happens. It's incredible. Program, like some kind of damn computer. Wait, he's a cyborg bear? 
I'm not gonna lie. I'd watch the hell out of that movie. Luckily, the bear is flagging them down. Hey, I need to lift back to town. Flyboy wants to take him out with the rocket launcher, but Christopher George wants to square off. And it makes sense. The law of the jungle states elder male bears like Christopher George have to square off against their younger rivals to assert dominance. Except the bear attacks the helicopter. Or more accurately, this dude in a bear suit. It's like a Teddy Ruxpin cosplay. Then Christopher George starts blasting like this is a drive-by. It's like boys in the woods out there. The bear kills Flyboy anyway, and now it's just him and Christopher George. Just as nature intended. But don't worry, he's got Chekhov's bazooka. Smile, you son of a bitch. Wait, wrong movie. Same outcome, though. Jesus Christ, that thing was the Ford Pinto of bears. And then Christopher George is like, fuck, who's gonna fly me back to town now? Hey, remember he had a girlfriend earlier? Wonder what ever happened to her. And he has to walk back to town. Great, now every grizzly in a 100 mile radius will smell blood and be out for revenge. And that, my friends, is Grizzly. And as far as Jaws ripoffs go, this one rates pretty high for me, mostly because Christopher George is fun to watch in anything, and we get that mini Chisholm reunion. This movie really has a hell of a cast. But enough about that. Can Grizzly pimp hand its way to a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Grizzly is surprisingly solid. It's easy to forget this movie was rated PG. We're treated to multiple grizzly maulings, severed limbs, a decapitated horse, and one exploding bear. It's not a wall-to-wall -wall splatter fest, but there's enough here to earn Grizzly a respectable three barf bag rating. Looking for another Jaws ripoff? Then be sure to check out my review of Joe D'Amato's Deep Blood. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.